Hello there, escapers. My name is Xenovilius of Topros, and welcome to my long overdue Salty Guide, a title which I personally achieved last month, and I was meant to make a guide on it as soon as I achieved it, but uh, yeah, I was kind of getting a bit salty about the fact that they released the ability to be able to check how many requirements you have left by talking to Sensei Hakase on Twilight, something which they hadn't done until two days after I got salty, and I was actually struggling a lot due to this. And that's the main reason I wanted to make this guide in order to ensure that you don't struggle with the remaining requirements Not sure which one you have to complete so you have a clear idea of what you need to do and what the best ways of doing it So the main requirements for this title are can be split into three parts The first part is the mask of goo Which is possibly the most annoying part the second is to unlock everything from the Waiko and ports reward shop This is just a case of farming chimes and taijutu nothing more than that nothing less and finally, you need to complete the Arc Journal, which involves exploring all the different birds, mushrooms, berries, kami spirits, castaways, and the tails. Some of which you will be obliged to do when you're doing the other requirements, and also if you're going for comp or trim. Now, to get the Mask of Goo, there are a few basic requirements you need to have before you can go any further. The first is requiring 90 agility, of course, to be able to uh, get the Tengu in your port. 6 million miles travelled to be able to get into the clue voyages of the Tengu. Uh, you need to be focused on the shield region as well. And finally, you, you want to make sure you have 100k chimes in your port because the mask is going to be the fourth item you get. Apparently, this is the order you get them in. Some people have said it, it's a bit mixed, but the mask is always last. Uh, whether or not the stuff before it is in the particular order you see on screen is debatable, but essentially it means that... Um, you need 100k chimes because the mask is last. Why do you need 100k chimes? You need to donate 25k chimes to the Tengu in your port before you send off your voyage whenever you get it in order to guarantee that you will get a piece of the goo outfit which you haven't got already. And don't worry if you forget, you will be reminded to donate before you send the voyage off so you don't have to worry about that. I did that by accident. Thankfully, there was a warning and uh, I was able to save myself from the pain of uh, wasting a, a clue voyage. They are quite rare to get and in fact before you can even get to the gift of goo voyage which is what has the different goo outfit pieces in it you need to make sure you do the first three clue voyages before you can get to the fourth one now a few tips and tricks for this you might want to have three tengu hotspots in your ports in order to maximize the chance of getting the tengu in your port you want to have as many map tables as possible this is because with four map tables you have a plus 10 percent chance of getting a clue voyage and there's something called a hint you get with the map and with four map tables you get a hint every day with one you only get a hint every four days with two you get a hint every three days with three you get a hint every two days so you want a four and you basically click on the map you get a hint if the Tengu is in your port and has a clue voyage active and whenever you get a hint you want to make a note of it so you want to save the hint and then talk to the adventurer this doesn't necessarily apply just to the Tengu but obviously the Tengu is the one you want to go after so you want to get the hint talk to the adventurer and uh, this this will allow you to focus their attention on the correct island because there are three islands to explore in the form of three clue voyages before you can get to the gift of goo voyage and if you don't use these clues they will go to these islands at random so by using these hints you will uh, increase your chance of getting to the gift of goo voyage faster if you like but yeah I haven't really used this before so it's something new to me you guys might be able to help me out and help each other out as to how exactly this works by talk in the comment section below I'm looking forward to that but essentially the way it works is the way I've described it and also if you build a new map table then it resets your timer so you can immediately get a new clue so you might want to do that as well instead of making four map tables at once just make one every time you need the clue until you reach the limit of four and then you can do it every day another tip is to uh, send off a double adventure voyage which isn't the tengu so for example the convict and the assassin and then don't check it when it returns just keep it there that means you'll only have three ships to play with and not four but what it will mean is that they won't come into the port again and there's no chance you will get them as an adventurer so that will increase the chance of you getting the tengu as a possible adventurer in your port the following day if that makes sense the disadvantage like i said is that you won't be able to use that ship and you won't be able to get the reward for those two adventurers voyage you also want to do random events this is something i've been doing every day and um, because the chance of getting a random event is based on 
the number of ships that are returned and that you check. What I like to do is I'd like to change my region focus to some really early on island like the Ark or something similar like that for the daytime. Do as many voyages as possible and then check for the ships that will maximize my chance of uh, getting random events. Do the random events and just before reset I'll switch my region focus back to the shield. Check for the Tengu's clue voyage just after reset and then go about that cycle again. But that's not necessary because the only reason you might want to do this is for the adventurer reroll that you get from random events and I personally haven't got it in a very 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 long time so yeah I don't think it's worth doing that particularly. You might just want to do your normal trade good voyages to gain lacquer, chai, tetsu plates and ancient bones. And finally you want to pray to Aaron Jesus. That's a given because this is going to be the limited factor. Unless you get extremely lucky this is definitely going to be the limiting factor in terms of time before you can get your mask of goose. So I hope that helped guys and uh, I hope that answered all your questions with regards to this. So the second part of your requirements is to get all of the permanent stuff from the Waiko and the Port Reward shops unlocked. And this is probably the most time consuming requirement but it's also the most predictable in terms of exactly how much you need you don't need to depend on RNG and there's no frustration involved so the best method to go about uh, getting this requirement done is probably by making shark soups and I've detailed that in my arc trim completions guide as to how you do that but essentially it involves gathering each of the five main resources from Uncharted Isles at equal amounts and if there's an imbalance then you balance it out by using ancestral energy to transmute between them and uh, that is basically the fastest way you can make your chimes and as far as Taijutu are concerned the best way to do that is by hopping through small islands to find treasure chests and uh, that's pretty much the only way to get Taiji to apart from a few other ways but that's the main way and in the process you're actually going to be able to get most if not all of the Voyager title requirements apart from the berries the castaways and the tails so you're going to be able to get most of the birds most of the mushrooms and most of the kami spirits specific to Uncharted Isles while you're doing this but yeah the requirement itself is that you need 160k chimes and 144 Taiji to to get the salty title requirement. Now if you've got comp or trim or if you're planning to get them then you're going to work towards this requirement by doing those requirements because the salty title encompasses both the trim and the comp requirement plus a lot more. So if you do the numbers then it turns out that if you did the comp and the trim requirements then you would have 110k chimes and 107 taiji to out of the required 160k and 144. So what you would have to get would only be 50k chimes and a further 37 Taiji 2 if you've trimmed already. Now these numbers are subject to change because they're going to release some more rewards in the future. I think in March they're going to release a few additional rewards which you probably will have to get. That includes some kind of high armor of Hanto and its related weapons and some other stuff as well. So that's going to probably increase and uh, it's probably going to be higher but let's have a look at what this actually means. So in terms of unlocks you pretty much need to get everything on this page. There are multiple tiers of some of these especially the ones with the reload symbol on them. The Sajibi contract guru you can't really get unless you've uh, already got the mask of goo. So make sure to buy this as soon as you get the mask of goo. That's what was preventing me from getting the salty title earlier when I was going to go for it. Because I was like what the hell I thought I had one of everything. What am I missing now? And it turns out you need to buy this thing. And for items you pretty much need to get everything here as well. Except for the flag and Teru's fang. And you can buy the idle crablatine pet from the G. You don't necessarily need to get the token from here and finally you need to get all the scrolls that you see on this page as well from the porch reward shop and uh, that should do it obviously there will be further requirements as I release them but for now this is it and now we come to the easiest part of the salty title requirement the voyager title I say easiest because it's almost entirely doable without having to wait for RNG there are some RNG requirements but for the most part you'll be able to get them all at the same time so by the time you finish you won't have to uh, wait for anything else if you plan it correctly so there are 16 birds to find 
out about, 16 mushrooms to find, 16 berries to find, 16 cami spirits to find, 10 castaways to find, and 11 tails, which is a comp requirement. I'm going to go through all of these except 11 tails because that can be looked up with a quick guide if you haven't done it already. And I'm assuming most people who are going to go for the salty title will have done the tails because it's a comp requirement. Let's kick things off with the 16 different birds you need to find, and these will take you a week to find because there are certain birds you can only find on certain days. Now for these birds, which you can only find on certain days, they spawn every half an hour, starting on the hour at reset, and they appear for 10 minutes. You can join an SC called Bird Space Watch, if you would like to be alerted when there's one. They're not always in sync. Uh, this may be slightly off so you can help each other out using that FC but it's not that much of an effort you've got 48 different opportunities in the space of 24 hours to be able to find these birds so yeah you can't really go wrong but anyway let's kick things off with the crested salago snatcher on a Monday this will be just above the docks at Wales Moor the eastern docks by the whaler on tuesday you can find the shrine ibis on aminishi near the statue the first statue that you get to when you're climbing up to the top on wednesday you can find the gongdung pelagon on the southwestern beach of goshima i'd recommend that you actually do the final destination tail before you get to this because otherwise you might suffer damage from the malignant entity which will be wandering around there on thursday you can find the cyclosis cockatiel probably just butchered that word but yeah, as you would expect, it appears on uh, Cyclosis at the southeastern beach. Friday's a rest day apparently for these guys. Uh, there are some other ones which I'll get onto at the end. But on Saturday you can find the Twilight Token, Twilight Token, Twilight. Hey, I just realised, and that will be just west of the Rumberry bushes near the coast. And finally, you can find the Wiker Warbler on Sunday, just in the middle of Wiker. Slap bang in the middle where all the markets are. And yeah, those are the daily birds if you like. Now we get onto the skilling birds. And uh, the first one is Pumpkin Limpkin. I'm not going to have footage for all of these by the way guys. Because they're not that easy to find. They are fairly easy but they're not that easy. You're probably going to find this while you're doing your mushroom requirement for the shark soups. To be able to get chimes together. I've heard horror stories about this guy taking absolutely ages to appear and it is quite rare to find this guy for some reason but as long as you're farming uh, you should be able to find it doesn't matter where you're farming by the way it could be on uncharted isles or berry bushes or anywhere on named islands throughout the arc as long as you're training farming on a farming spot the next one is a science soul kakapo the divination bird doesn't matter where you're doing divination within the arc you can find it anywhere but i've only seen it near ancestral energy spots so i'm not sure whether it can appear near positive and negative energy spots next we have the hunter one the turtle shell plover and again uh, you can find these at any turtle or ornate turtle spots throughout the arc uncharted or named island the azure parrot you can find while cooking but you got to be cooking either arc gumbo or shark soups on fires and ranges within the arc so yeah you can't be using a portable range at the combat academy for example but i believe it's not that rare to find so that's a good thing next we have the awagua which you can find by mining sea salt or alley of sea salt throughout the arc and last but not least for the skilling pets we have the great pecker which you can find by cutting bamboo or golden bamboo throughout the arc again so those are fairly easy to find perhaps the toughest one might have been the pumpkin limpkin because it is a bit rarer than the rest but it depends on RNG as well my friend had to do thousands and thousands and thousands of mushrooms before he found a pumpkin limpkin but again you can use the birdwatch FC to help you out with that to round these guys off we have four sort of random birds uh, the first one is dusky wigglebill you can find this whenever there is dusk when the skybox is set to dusk on uncharted isles you can't force it using a hammock and expect it to appear though it has to be there when you check it for the first time if that's not happening then uh, you can go to the Amanishi Spirit Realm on Tuesday and it should appear at the West Beach. Next we have the Tichi Tinamo. Tinamo. Tinamu. It appears on Fridays on the islands that were once turtles and on Tuesday and Thursday on the Uncharted Isles, on any Uncharted Isle. The fluffy jubilet is also quite similar to this in the sense that it spawns on Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday on Uncharted Isles only though and so does the Kukur Macaw. So uh, just make sure you have a look out for these guys whenever you're doing Uncharted Isle skilling or Taijitu hunting or whatnot and uh, they should be fairly easy to get. 
Now, you can find all the mushrooms in the space of a few hours. Essentially, they are split between three different regions, the Uncharted Isles, Goshima, and the islands that were once turtles. Now, within the Uncharted Isles, you can find seven out of the 16 mushrooms you need to complete this part of the journal. And these include the Blush Room, Honey Fungus, Porcini, Inky Cap, Arc, Puffball, Summertwell, and Rasula, with Summertwell and Rasula being rare mushrooms. So if you quick chat rare mushrooms you'll be able to announce how many mushrooms you've caught and how many rare mushrooms you've caught caught that's not the right word foraged that's the right word and uh, the rare mushrooms have a drop rate of around one in 200 to one in 300 so it might take a while to get them there are four of these rare mushrooms so in goshima you can get one more of these rare mushroom types and there are only five different mushroom types you can get from goshima washroom immoral corpse bloom snuff truffle and butter cap with Buttercap being the rare mushroom. Essentially what I recommend is that you camp Goshima until you get all of these and then you move on to the islands that were once turtles which will give you the washroom again, Lactarius, Paraspore, Purple Bellow and Toastal with Toastal being the last rare mushroom you need to get. And then uh, once you do all this you'll be able to tick all of these guys off fairly easily and I believe there's a title for it as well. Fun Guy, the Fun Guy or the Fun Gal. The berry requirement for the Voyager title is the one that's going to take you the most time. And that's because it's actually time-gated, not RNG-gated. It is, it is RNG-gated as well, but it's also time-gated if you know what I mean. So this requirement actually involves cross-pollinating a bunch of seeds in order to get a bunch of other seeds, starting from just four basic seeds and getting up to 16 different berries. It takes 42 hours minimum to grow a berry after planting the seed, and you have two patches to play with, and this is where cross-pollination comes in. Now, if you're going to go for this 42-hour thing, then it's going to take you 504 hours in total, which is exactly 21 days. Or if you're going to do it once every two days, which is what I did, then it will take you a total of 24 days to get this requirement done. The four starting seeds you need are the following. You need an exuberry seed, which you can get by foraging exuberry bushes on uncharted owls, which are sort of fairly common to find. You need a rumberry seed, which you can get by foraging rumberry bushes on toilet. And these two are the ones you need to get started. So according to the plan I'm going to show you, which, by the way, has been taken straight from rune wiki and apparently it's the most efficient way of doing it but um, perhaps there's a more efficient way i'm not sure but this is fairly efficient when you look at it anyway those two seeds exuberry and rumberry are the ones you need to get started and they're fairly easy to get you can go up to day 10 out of 24 with just these two seeds but the other two that you definitely need are stoneberry and stormberry seeds these two are very rare they are very rare so apparently depending on your account uh, there's a 50 50 chance that the stoneberry seed will be common Common for you when you loot Uncharted Isle treasure chests and the other one will be rare for you. For me the common one was a Stoneberry Seed and the Stoneberry Seed took a very 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 long time to find just rushing through small Uncharted Isles and opening up every single treasure chest I could find. It took me about 1.5k supplies or 15k chimes to spent on these supplies before I could actually get it so you need to bear that in mind and you can pair that up with your Taiji to hunt for the Taiji to requirement part of the salty title and also with uh, the bird hunt and the kami spirit hunt which you'll find out about. You can also get the stoneberry seed by pickpocketing cyclops but I wouldn't recommend it unless you are really 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 dry on treasure chests for this. So the way it works is that you need to plant these seeds in a particular order, farm the patches in a particular order and then put the seeds in in a particular order. On day zero it doesn't really matter, you just put an exuberry seed and a rumberry seed into the planter pot. On day two however you need to make sure you do it in the following way. So the color of the text indicates whether it's a seed or a berry. White text indicates that you're planting a seed. Red text indicates that you're farming the bush for the berry, which is what you need uh, to tick that particular berry off the list. So first you want to do the exuberry bush you want to farm it get the exuberry seed and you will also get another seed from the cost 
pollination, which will be a fireberry seed. Then you want to plant uh, that fireberry seed into that bush patch that you just emptied without touching the other one for the moment. Once you planted it, then you go about picking the runberry bush. Because you planted a fireberry seed on the adjacent patch before you harvested the runberry bush, you're going to get a blisterberry seed as a result when you farm the runberry bush. But then you want to keep that aside for later and you want to plant an another exuberry seed into the second patch. At this point, you'll have a bunch of exuberry seeds from farming the exuberry bush. So you don't have to worry about that. You only need one of each to start with. And yeah, that's basically how it works. Now for the rest of it, from days 4 to 12, you can see for yourself how you want to do this and what order you need to go in. Make sure you follow the order religiously, otherwise you might mess it up. And on day 12, you'll finish actually cross-pollinating everything and you'll finally get the last seed you need in order to plant the remaining bushes and get the berries out of them. And the last seed you'll be getting at the end of day 12 will be, well, on day 14, I guess, when you harvest the stoneberry bush after you've planted it, is a rosaberry seed. So the remaining seeds you'll need to plant, which you haven't planted yet, will be nine in total. And these are what you will need to plant and uh, harvest for the remainder of your 24 days. And therefore, from this point, it doesn't matter what order you put the seeds in, what order you harvest the bushes in. There are no more cross-pollinated seeds to find, so you can do it in any which way you want. And uh, at the end of day 22, when you put in that musaberry seed, you know, that's the last thing you need to harvest. That's the last thing you will need to finish off the berries on day 24 or on day 21 if you follow the 42 hour cycle day 24 if you follow the once every two days cycle and yeah it can be fairly monotonous but uh, it doesn't involve much work if you follow this procedure then you should be very comfortable with the outcome of ticking off this part of the requirement now you're gonna have a bunch of berries and seeds after doing all this which is going to take up bank space so what you want to do is you want to sell all the remaining seeds to any the farming merchant on toilet on the western coast you can buy any back from uh, this gnome when there's a new requirement or whatever when you feel like planting some more and once you finish the berry requirement you can also talk to him for a 50k farming xp length and an extra 10% xp and yield to future berry farming and you can sell the remaining berries to the fruit merchant terry right beside annie and uh, that should free up a bunch of bank space without having to destroy the berries and seeds in case there's a future update that requires them Next up we have the Kami Spirits. There are two versions of each spirit. There are eight spirits in total. Well, 16 in total, should I say. There's the Bakami version, which is the one that you find on named islands. And there is the Orakami version, which you can only find on Uncharted Islands. The Bakami versions you can find by just uh, hopping around different islands, named islands, not Uncharted Islands. And uh, you should eventually be able to find them all if you just keep exploring. As for the Uncharted Isle ones, they are a bit more difficult to find. But anyway, the Bakami spirits were able to be found by quick hopping in a particular spot on Waiko because there were two spawn points and you could just quick hop but I believe they've fixed this so that may not be a good option. As for the Orokami versions uh, you can't really do much apart from just quick hopping between Uncharted Islands and uh, looking for them. They won't respawn once you spot one and I believe you can only see one per Uncharted Isle so you could just pair this up with your Taiji 2 and your Stoneberry slash Stoneberry Seed Hunt and you should be able to get them all fairly quickly. The one I had the most trouble with was the Fortunate Orokami. There's a 5% chance of this and the Murderous Orokami spawning when an Orokami spawns and I believe the chance of an Orokami spawning on an Uncharted Island is roughly 1 in 3. Correct me if I'm wrong but I believe it's around that. So yeah, they appear as yellow dots so you don't have to go searching for them. And it may take you a while, like I said, to find the one you need, but all it takes is a bit of persistence, like the stoneberry and stoneberry seeds, and perhaps also the pumpkin limpkin, but uh, you will get it. You do need 95 hunter though to catch the highest level one, and complete that page of your journal. And once you've caught them all, you can uh, talk to Sensei Seaworth next to Sensei Hakase in Twilight, in order to get either double loot or triple experience. And uh, that's a nice little buff to have when you uh, go hunting them in the future because they can drop these masks which are really valuable or can be really valuable so getting two masks is uh, pretty awesome but you can only get these masks from the Orakami not the Bakami 
And last but not least, we come to something slightly more fun than the grind of the previous uh, few sections, I guess. That's the castaways. So there are a ton of these guys to find, and they're not all visible at once. In fact, the next time they'll be visible all at once is uh, going to be on the 9th of November 2022. If you want to wait that long, be my guest. But uh, otherwise, yeah, they follow a sort of unique cycle. Essentially, you can find them all within the space of a week if you keep looking. Uh, but I'll link the cycle in the description below essentially i'll show you what happens so let's start with the milky jewel one it's going to be found on the southeast end of the beach in waiko so you just click on it pick it up click on the bottle get a treasure map talk to your quartermaster and he will transport you to the island the milky bay island and there you can talk to a coconut that's called milky jewel you don't need to go through the chat you'll get a taiji to straight away when you talk to him and uh, you will get his name ticked off and you basically get 10 free taiji to this way so you might want to get this done before you do your reward shop stuff. Next we have One-Eyed Willy. So you can find uh, this bottle just uh, west of the Wellsmore docks near the Whaler where you can fish for Salago. And you just follow the same procedure to get to One-Eyed Willy who is the parrot on the Cyclops, not the Cyclops itself I think. Is it? No? Maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, guys. But yeah, just talk to him, get a Taiji too. Next, we have Manti Claws. For this guy, you need uh, at least one Spirit Dragon Charm so you can go to the Spirit Realm of Amanishi. So once you get into that, then you go to the Western Beach near the Amanishi Moi. Moi? Mao, uh, where you do the head of the family mini quest and yeah you just pick it up follow the same procedure and there you go next we have Swabby Steve who's a monkey this is easier to find because it's on the normal Amanishi not the spirit realm it's near where the assassin is on the southeast beach and yeah you follow the same procedure to get your free Tajitu next we have the spring break island bottle this is gonna be just northwest of Rosie in Waiko this is probably the one you're gonna pass by most so you'll probably get this done fairly quickly if you haven't already and uh, yeah you pick it up and you follow the same procedure oh by the way you can destroy these as soon as you get the name ticked off and you get your Taiji to so that it doesn't use up bank space next we have the Azela Oak Heart one found on the northern edge of the first island of the islands that were once turtles near the mushroom cluster and yeah you follow the same procedure for this the harley one you can find on the southern shore of the second island near the turtle portal the squick one which i believe was the last one to be found by the community is slightly difficult i guess it's on the third island of the islands that were once turtles underneath the rocks in the middle on the west side so you just have to have a bit of a look there and finally we have the salmonella one which is just uh next to the southern dock on Goshima. So yeah, those are the 10 different castaways. Once you find all of them, you will unlock the title of the castaway. And by the way, you can also find a dusky wiggle bill on one of these 10 different islands. Doesn't have to be on a conventional uncharted island if you like. And that concludes this guide. Uh, it was a bit long, I appreciate that, uh, but that was necessary in order to go through everything. I hope it was useful. Tell me if I got something wrong. If you found that you didn't quite understand something, I can try and help you out. And if you have any any other comments feel free to post down below don't forget to check your remaining requirements at sensei hakase and uh, don't forget to buy your sojoba contract guru once you get your mask of goo but yeah the main thing i would say is that you really want to get started on the berries and the mask of goo as soon as possible and once you do that the rest you can do while you're waiting for those so i hope you get your salty title soon thank you for watching and i will see you in the next one